Lord, help us. Lord, help this country. My Jesus. I was just looking out the window this morning. These, you guys drove up. The, the boys were out here in the street passing the footballs, you know. And I thought, my God. I've been praying for these people. They, they live around here. And I have been praying for them. I've been praying for them for nine years or even more for their souls. Amen. They don't know anything about church. They don't know anything about God. They don't know anything about a pastor, what a pastor is. They don't even know what a pastor or, or, They don't even know what it, they, they are. But, well, well, what is a pastor? You know, what is it? You know, I said, you know, so they don't even know. So it, it, it's just, it's, it's just sad. But my message this morning is going to be getting out of Sodom. And today, you know, when we talk about Sodom, we talk about Egypt, it's associated with all that is evil. Violence, perverted, ungodly. And when we come out of the world or out of Sodom when we're born again we come out of that mess and we come into the kingdom of God and we thank you Lord God thank you. so we come out of Sodom yes. but the rest of our Christian life our walk yes. is usually for most Christians and I'm not saying all Christians but the Christians in the world today in the church it's God trying to get Sodom out of them. Amen. Yes. Trying to get Sodom out of them. Amen. So uh, let's look at um, 2 Peter 2, 6. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 2, 6. The story of Sodom provides us with a powerful example of God's hatred for sin. The Apostle Peter writes, God, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. It's an example. He's dealing with this city should be a lesson to every society, every nation. What he did. He hates sin. These nations has turned their back on God, on the things of God. Amen. So is America have turned her back on God. Even the church has turned Amen. their back on God. Amen. Then we want to look around and say, my goodness, what's happening in America? Yes. I can tell you what's happening in America. Amen. You left God. People, Amen. you left his word. You left him. You left Jesus. You left the cross. You left the blood of Jesus. Amen. And Amen. back to the devil it goes. I mean, he's always had it. But now he even has the church. In Matthew 15, 19 through 20, 15, Matthew 15, Jesus himself says the Som Solomite nature is in us. Amen. It's there. Amen. We got to battle this flesh and right. our will and the devil and the world. Right. He said it's in us. Amen. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts and murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. Right. These are the things which defile a man. Make him unclean. Right. Because we want to live just like Lot. We want to live too close to the world. And this is what I'm going to be speaking on. The parallel of the church with Lot. His life. If you read his life, you can see what the church is Coming to, and a lot of the Christians. 
So I want to talk about Lot. Where, who is Lot? Where did he come from? Well, he's a nephew of Abraham. And you remember when God spoke to Abraham and Abraham listened, had faith in the almighty God. He came out of the, the world of his father who made idols. Back then, they just, he, his father made idols and they worshiped them. And he knew by watching his father making idols that they aren't gods. They're false gods. So when God spoke to Abraham, he listened. He had faith, and that made him righteous. Now, we talk about in the Bible how righteous Lot was. You know, and I thought, reading about Lot, he didn't, wasn't very righteous to me. But righteous back then was believing in God. That made him righteous. Just like we believe in Jesus and his blood right. makes us righteous today. Yes. Back then, it was believing, having faith of true God, living God. So that's why when you read about Lot being righteous, man, that's why he was righteous. Because he didn't live righteous. Of course, neither did Abraham. He wasn't either. <laughs> but anyway, so the story goes on. Of course, God told Abraham, get out, take your family, your, your wives, your, ch your children, your cattle, your servants, and leave. But don't take any of your family members. And what did he do? He took Lot. He took Lot. You know, <laughs> we read this Bible, and God tells us what to do and not to do. And what do we do? We're going to do what we want to do. And, of course, what does it do? It causes trouble. And what did Lot do to Abraham? Caused him trouble on down the road. So he took Lot. So, so it got to where Lot's family grew, his cattle grew, Abraham's family grew, his cattle grew, and there wasn't enough land. So Abraham looked at Lot and said, hey, you're going to have to go. We're going to have to separate. So he says, you go one way, I'll go the other. So Lot looks this way towards Sodom and Gomorrah. He looks that way. It was plush grass, had water. It looked good. And, of course, Lot, he's only going to think of himself. Like most people do. He was thinking of himself. He says, I'm going this way. He says, so Abraham had to go that way, which was desert. <laughs> <laughs> but God blessed him anyway. So for a while, Lot lived outside Sodom. He didn't go in. But what happens when you get close to sin? You want to live this close to sin. You don't want to give it up. You don't want to give everything up to, to God. You still want some of this sin over here. You still want some of the world. You still want some of Sodom. And what happened? He falls in. He went into the city. He became a judge. He sat at the city gates, which meant authority and status. And he liked it. Now, he still believed in God, but he wasn't a witness to God. He didn't speak the word. You know, he didn't believe in what was going on in that city, and it was terrible. It said the stench from that city raised to God. And he says, I got to destroy this mess. I mean, people lived the way they wanted to live. They did the way they wanted to do. Whatever made them feel good or happy, that's the way they're going to live. Does it kind of look like the world today? Sure does to me. But you know, God made a supernatural way for Lot to leave that city. Because there were some kings that came against Sodom, and they went in, they took the people, they took the goods, they took what they wanted, and they left. And they took Lot and his family with them. So a servant got loose, went up to Abraham, said, Abraham, you know, they took Lot, they took everything, they, and they took the city. So Lot took his, I mean, Abraham took his 300 and I think 18 men, and he went after the kings and their armies. 
and caught up with him. And, of course, Abraham living for God, God made a way. God made a way to rescue Lot. And did Lot go a different direction? He went right back in to Sodom. Now, that's the way a lot of people who come out of the world who have been born again and say, it's the same thing, parallel. I'm telling you, it's parallel. They go right back in the world. They don't want to live for God. They want to live for themselves. And many of them goes right back into Sodom. And this world is stinking. It's a stinking mess. So, down the line, the Lord and two angels, two men came to uh, Abraham. Abraham went out to meet them, washed their feet, gave them something to drink, fixed the meal, and they talked. And the Lord says, I'm going to destroy Sodom. And Abraham says, well, Lot's there. He says, please don't destroy Lot. Save Lot. The only reason why Lot was saved, it wasn't his righteousness, is because that Abraham pleaded for his life. And that's why we're not destroyed because we got Jesus up in heaven on the right hand side of God pleading for us. Praying for us. Making a way for us. So, as the story goes, the two men went into the uh, city. Lot was there. Lot's inviting them into the house. And later on that night, of course, it's all the homosexuals. They seen there was two new men, strange men. They didn't know they were angels. They come knocking on his door. Give us these two men. We want them. We want to know them. When the Bible, when it says we want to know them, that means they want to have relationships with them. They want to have sex with them. And Lot says, no. He pleaded with them, no. He says, take my daughters. My Jesus, my Jesus. Take my daughters. Lot is an example of what hidden sin can do to a righteous man. You got hidden sin in there? His sin had produced in him such a dangerous condition that he gave up everything to save face, including his beloved family. Save faith, face. But he, he probably in his mind believed that there were, there were homosexuals. They, they didn't want women. They wanted men. So probably in the back of his mind, he, he would know that they're not going to harm his daughters. Because they didn't, they didn't like women. But still, that, that, that's, it's terrible. But I want to get back to the story I've seen on Dateline. They had an undercover story going into the sex slave trade. And they went in, got in, undercover, and they seeing all these women and all the things going on. And they met this one woman, and they were going to try to buy her out of that situation. So they, you know, they, the money was too high that they, the traders wanted, and they, they bargained, and they, you know, trying to get it down. And finally, they got it down to a point where they could, they like could give them the money. And they brought this lady out, and she was a pretty lady, pretty young lady. They put her in the house, you know, trying to fix her up, trying to give her a new life, trying to make a way for her, you know. And they showed, showed her later on, she was how nice she looked and how happy she was. Yes, I'm glad I came out of that, that someone saved me. But it wasn't long that she left. She went back into it. Now we can clean up the outside, but it takes the blood of Jesus to fix the inside. 
They helped her on the outside, but she inside she was still that terrible person. And she didn't think she deserved anything better than the life she had. And she went right back in it. You know, it's the same way with Egypt. And, and uh, when Israel was in Egypt. Got them out. Took them out of Egypt. But he couldn't get Egypt out of them. Took 40 years. He had to put them in the desert. For that generation to die out. Before he could, he could work with them. My God. So, you know, you can't make a deal with sin. And that's what Lot was trying to do when he was given the, the daughters. He was trying to make a deal. In Genesis 19, 7 and 8, it's, he said, I pray you, brethren, even called them brethren, he probably was their brother. You know, Lot had lived so long and so content among the ungodly people that he no longer a believer witnessed to God. He had allowed his environment to shape him rather than shaping his, his environment. He blended right into the sinful culture of his day that he did not want to leave it we have so many so-called Christians. I call them a head mouth Christian. Head and mouth. They, they know, they speak it, but it's not down here. That same attitude Lot had. They do not want to come out of this world system of sin. They don't want to come out of it. They want to live it. They still want their, their, their life. So it says, uh, Lot says, I pray you, brothers, do not do so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. I, it's just what Lot did. You know, it's, you know, go on with the story. So the angels told Lot, you're going to have to get out. I'm going to destroy. The angels were going to destroy the city. So he runs to his soon-to-be son-in-laws. And he told them that God going to destroy Sodom. And they laughed at him. You know why? Because he wasn't living it. You know, and they thought, well, if he really believes God was going to destroy Sodom, he would run out right now. He wouldn't stay here. You know, if he really believed it, so he wouldn't have stayed there. So they just laughed at him. So he gets back, and the angel says, in the morning, you know, we're going to, you, you got to go. So he slept like a baby. I tell you what, if God prophesied that he was going to warn us that he was going to destroy Oxford, I'm not going to be sleeping that night. I'm going to be getting ready and get going. And he lingered. The next morning, he lingered. He didn't want to leave. He loved Sodom. He loved his life. And the angel had to take him by the hand, take his wife, take his girls, and put them out. And he told him, he says, now, go on up on this mountain. He says, I don't want to go up that mountain. I'm afraid something evil is going to happen. He says, can I go over here to this little town, Zor? Can I go over here? You know? 
You know, God destroyed more than just Sodom and Gomorrah. He destroyed all these little towns around here that, that was evil. So, he, so they couldn't destroy it. He said, okay, he allowed it. He said, go on over there. But sooner or later, he did, he feared, because what he's seen about the other towns is not Sodom and Gomorrah. He did go up on the mountain with his daughter. Of course, remember his wife looked back. The angel said, don't look back. Keep going. Don't look back. And that's the way we are when we're in the world. When we come out, don't look back. There's nothing back there. Don't look back. Of course, she looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. And when he went up on the mountains, of course, the daughter says, oh, there's no men for us. So they got him drunk. And they had relations with him. And each one of them had a baby, and it was a little boy, each one. Of them. And one of them was an Amorite. Now, you know where the Amorite were Ruth and Bo, that's where Ruth and Boaz. Ruth was an Amorite. That's where she came from, okay? So, you know, he wouldn't listen to God. He still was going to do what he wanted to do, and his life turned into a mess. Hallelujah. Second Peter 1. Let's go to Second Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Reveals how God delivers us out of Sodom, people. He delivers us out of Sodom. He delivers us out of sin. We don't have to live in sin. It says, according as his divine power have given us unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He's already given it to us. Everything that pertains to life, we have people and godliness. He made a way for us to live godly, to separate ourselves from the world. Through the knowledge of him, that have called us to glory and virtue, thereby given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Amen. The Bible says there's 37,000 promises in here. God. Amen. Whatever you're going through, you're going to find a promise to stand on. Right. Oh, yeah. That by these ye might be partakers of divine nature, having what? Escaped. The corruption that is in the world through lust. He made a way for us yes, to escape. How do we Christians escape sin? We were given the divine power. We're given the Holy Spirit. Life and godliness. Through our faith in God's promises. He's made a way. Stay with him. Yes. Trust in him. Have faith in him. Mm -hmm. Read his word. Find that promise. Hallelujah. God wants us to go do more than just drift through life. Right. He don't want us to drift through life. Like a piece of driftwood going down the river, just bobbing here and the bobbing there. You know, you never know where it's going to be. Amen. Where it's going to go. He wants us to have a purpose in our life for him, to live for him. He wants people to be an influence for him. We need to be an influence. Yes. 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 A lighthouse to show people the true light, the true light. He wants us to be a lighthouse, a beacon for the people who are lost. It is dangerous to become attached to the present corrupt world system because it awaits God's swift and sudden destruction or judgment. Did he bring judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes, he did. He will bring judgment on America. And I think to what's going on in looking at America, 
What's happening? His judgment is starting. People don't know what to do. They're scared. They have no hope. No hope. We have hope. Because God says he'd never leave us or forsake us. Amen. Whatever we're going through. Amen. I don't care what trials, tribulations you're going through. He said he'll never leave you or forsake you. He will bring you through some way, somehow. That's right. Amen. Amen. Don't give up on God. Stay with him. Amen. So I'm just saying. People, read. Read. Genesis, the whole chapter 19, about what happened. Don't be Lot. Don't be like Lot. Don't be like like Lot. Don't be like a lot of Christians out here. Like I said, it's head and mouth Christians. That's what I call them, head and mouth Christians. I met so many Christians. Yeah, they know probably more than I do sometimes in this Bible. And they, you know, what, what comes out sounds very good. 